Hello PC gamers, great news. Today I'm going to give you a little overclocking tutorial with my Gigabyte 1060 GTX using the Gigabyte Extreme Engine Overclocking Utility you see in front of you here. Warning, disclaimer, overclocking can damage your hardware. Use caution and common sense when doing so. Be careful and don't blame me for anything that might happen. Now that that's out of the way, let's get back to our tutorial. Now for a quick tour of the app, the LED section doesn't apply to this card, just for the G1 I suppose. Now the fan section is quite interesting. On auto, it'll do this fan curve, silent is a less aggressive curve, and turbo is a more aggressive curve. On default settings, the max temperature is 65 degrees Celsius. When you overclock it, it can reach up to 72 degrees Celsius. But what's interesting here is when you hit the 3D active fan. It should be called 3D Fan Stop because it makes a threshold to completely stop the fan. No fanage means it's going to be ultra silent. Now what's going to happen is your card's going to reach around 50 degrees Celsius. The fan speed and temperature are dropping and the fan will completely stop. But don't worry, the temperatures continue to drop and there's absolutely no problem with it. It's a really cool ultra silent feature. So really neat to see this on this card. Next up, the advanced section lets you set a manual curve for aggressive fan speeds, so good to see. Now the overclocking section, now if you're doing the default it'll be on gaming mode. Eco is just a lower curve so it doesn't get as hot or clocks as high. And overclock mode doesn't work on this card, I assume again it's just for the G1. Back to overclocking. As soon as you touch anything on this page, we'll immediately go into manual overclocking mode. So let's go over my overclock. Now I've got a very high memory clock. Be cautious. Now I started at 600, went to 1200, eventually tried 1500, which I found a little unstable and found a good, decently stable score, run 1420. Now this was the number that worked for me. Results may vary. Now my GPU clock, I actually gained 173 megahertz. Now this can be a little deceiving. So this makes our base clock 1730 and our overclock boost clock 1945. However, there should be another little thing here that actually has another number because boost 3.0 technology will go anywhere from 160 to 200 megahertz on top of this. So when I actually set it at 1945, it's gonna hit 2100 megahertz or 2.1 gigahertz, which is the actual limit of these cards. They don't really go over that even if you boost that GPU voltage. That's just how it is. NVIDIA imposed this limit. So be aware of that. Next up, I kept my GPU voltage fairly low because I found it doesn't really need all that much. You know, we're not boosting it quite that high. Anywhere from, I say, 12 to 20 percent and you should be good. It'll vary on different cards. Now, in addition to that, the power limit only goes up by 16 percent here, but I'd say put it up all the way. I've tested it and it's been absolutely fine. Now the temperature limit here affects the target score here. We can actually pull this down and put it to say 65 degrees Celsius. Now this will keep the card a lot cooler despite any activity overclocking or the whatnot. Now the problem is that when you do that, it may throttle the card down a little more often to keep those temperatures cool. So be aware of that. In fact, this little button here will link these two clocks. And it recommends that if you're going to put this all the way up to 16%, that you actually increase the limit by plus 9 degrees. So that's how it works. If you put this up, you'll actually see higher clock scores, but beware of the higher target limit. So let's test some of that out. Alright, so here I am in the Witcher 3. Now I've got my overclock going and I'm using MSI Afterburner to do this on-screen stuff you see up here in the left-hand corner. Now take a look, here's my GPU clock and you can see the temperature on the far left there and the GPU usage in the middle. You got the memory clock underneath that, which you gotta double to get the correct amount and the amount of memory used in this current game. The LIM thing is if I hit the actual limit for my GPU and then Direct3D 11 you'll see is the FPS. I get my CPU temperature, CPU usage and RAM usage for my system. All right, let's test this out. Now I got to note that I lose 10 FPS for using the shadow play recording and my actual GPU boost is down like 30, 40 megahertz or so for some reason while I'm doing this. You would have seen it was at 2100 when I started, but again, once you do recording, it goes down a bit. So note that if you're someone who does a bit of recording with shadow play. Now you can see I'm hitting about, you know, high 40s to 50s 
FPS. Now I'd be normally getting 60, but of course I'm recording. So what we're going to do here is we're going to bring up a split screen of the regular and the overclocked. So here we are doing the split screen. On the left we have the standard overclock and on the right we have my higher manual overclock. Now I get about 10 FPS improvement when I do my overclock and I lose 10 FPS for doing this recording and it keeps the max GPU clocks down slightly for the shadow play. However, I'm using an older Phenon 2 X6 CPU, which is costing me another 10 FPS or so. If you had an i5 or i7 or something, you'd be doing quite a bit better. So that's also a limiting factor, so don't base your performance on that. This card runs incredibly for my older hardware. When testing out the long-term stability of your overclock, I recommend getting a continuous loop benchmark like the Haven or Valley benchmarks. They're nice to look at and you can leave them going for an hour or two and just kind of see what happens. If you see artifacting, defects in colors, little things fluctuating on a screen, texture errors and that sort of thing, well then you're going to want to dial back your overclock a bit. Now this is a good test to just kind of leave running for a long time. Now in terms of synthetic benchmarks, I tried out Time Spy. Now my default score was 4080. When I applied my overclock, I got a nice boost to 4442, a difference of 362 points, which is a substantial gain in this test. Now to do the on-screen overlays, I'm using MSI Afterburner, downloaded in the video's description. Hit that little gear symbol, go to the monitoring tab, Select anything you want to see on the screen and put a little check mark beside it like so. Do it for every little thing in this list you'd like to see on the screen. Once you're done, hit OK and it'll appear in your games. Overall, overclocking on this card was really a great experience. I was quite happy with the purchase and the performance of this card. Please like the video and subscribe. And I'll leave you with a little footage of me playing the new Battlefield 1 beta on my new card overclocked. Thanks for watching, everybody. We have lost objective duff. Objective Freddy.